Hi there. It thrills me to welcome you to this first podcast in the Digging Deeper Daily Reading Calendar. This is edition number one of the Daily Bible Reading Podcast. You clicked on an episode that has a yellow icon and the name begins with GN. That means that we'll be reading the Good News Translation, and today on day number one, we read Genesis 1 and 2, Job 1, and our first reading in Mark 1. Congratulations on starting today on a life-transforming journey. The Digging Deeper Daily plan will help you be successful in your commitment to read the whole Bible in a year. The unique order of the readings, together with the brief devotional notes, I hope will help you see the various threads that unify the message of the Old and New Testaments. I hope these notes will help you remember what you have read the day before and hint at the deep and incredibly rich treasures in God's Word. But the most satisfying treasures that you will find this year will be the ones that you dig to discover for yourself. Check out the Shovels page of dailybiblereading.info for tools to help you go deeper in your study. And now let's turn to Genesis. The first five books of the Bible are the Jewish Torah, and the Bible refers to them collectively as the Law. Many other books in the Bible attribute the authorship of these five books to Moses. Genesis is the foundational book of the whole Bible. When we were in our first Bible translation project among the Oria ethnic group of Papua, Indonesia, I witnessed how getting a little detail of the foundation wrong, such as how the first sin happened, can wreck the whole building that is being constructed. This book of Genesis tells us what God wants us to know about the beginning of our world, the beginning of sin, mankind's rebellion against God, and who God and Satan are. Genesis 1 in the Good News Translation In the beginning, when God created the universe, the earth was formless and desolate. The raging ocean that covered everything was engulfed in total darkness, and the Spirit of God was moving over the water. Then God commanded, Let there be light, and light appeared. God was pleased with what he saw. Then he separated the light from the darkness, and he named the light day, and the darkness night. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the first day. Then God commanded, Let there be a dome to divide the water and to keep it in two separate places. And it was done. So God made a dome, and it separated the water under it from the water above it. He named the dome Sky. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the second day. Then God commanded, Let water below the sky come together in one place, so that the land will appear. And it was done. He named the land Earth, and the water which had come together he named Sea. And God was pleased with what he saw. Then he commanded, Let the earth produce all kinds of plants, those that bear grain and those that bear fruit. And it was done. So the earth produced all kinds of plants, and God was pleased with what he saw. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the third day. Then God commanded, Let lights appear in the sky to separate day from night and to show the time when days, years, and religious festivals begin. They will shine in the sky to give light to the earth. And it was done. So God made the two larger lights, the sun to rule over the day and the moon to rule over the night. He also made the stars. He placed the lights in the sky to shine on the earth, to rule over the day and night, and to separate light from darkness. And God was pleased with what he saw. Evening passed, and morning came. 
That was the fourth day. Then God commanded, Let the water be filled with many kinds of living beings, and let the air be filled with birds. So God created the great sea monsters, all kinds of creatures that live in the water, and all kinds of birds. And God was pleased with what he saw. He blessed them all and told the creatures that live in the water to reproduce and to fill the sea, and he told the birds to increase in number. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the fifth day. Then God commanded, Let the earth produce all kinds of animal life, domestic and wild, large and small, and it was done. So God made them all, and he was pleased with what he saw. Then God said, And now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. They will have power over the fish, the birds, and all animals, domestic and wild, large and small. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female, blessed them, and said, Have many children, so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish, the birds, and all the wild animals. I have provided all kinds of grain and all kinds of fruit for you to eat. But for all the wild animals and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food. And it was done. God looked at everything he had made, and he was very pleased. Evening passed, and morning came. That was the sixth day. Genesis 2 And so the whole universe was completed. By the seventh day God finished what he had been doing and stopped working. He blessed the seventh day and set it apart as a special day, because by that day he had completed his creation and stopped working. And that is how the universe was created. When the Lord God made the universe, there were no plants on the earth, and no seeds had sprouted, because he had not sent any rain, and there was no one to cultivate the land. But water would come up from beneath the surface and water the ground. Then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed a man out of it. He breathed life-giving breath into his nostrils, and the man began to live. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he put the man he had formed. He made all kinds of beautiful trees grow there and produce good fruit. In the middle of the garden stood the tree that gives life and the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. A stream flowed in Eden and watered the garden. Beyond Eden it divided into four rivers. The first river was Pishon. It flows around the country of Havila. Pure gold is found there and also rare perfume and precious stones. The second river is Gihon. It flows around the country of Cush. The third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria and the fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to cultivate it and guard it. He told him, You may eat the fruit of any tree in the garden, except the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. You must not eat the fruit of that tree. If you do, you will die the same day. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to live alone. I will make a suitable companion to help him. So he took some soil from the ground and formed all the animals and all the birds. Then he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And that is how they all got their names. So the man named all the birds and all the animals. But not one of them was a suitable companion to help him. Then the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping he took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the flesh. He formed a woman out of the rib and brought her to him. 
Then the man said, At last, here is one of my own kind, bone taken from my bone and flesh from my flesh. Woman is her name because she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife, and they become one. The man and the woman were both naked, but they were not embarrassed. And now let's open to Job. The story of Job is set in the period of the patriarch Abraham, and it takes place in the land of the East. What I did not realize until recently is that signs indicate that this book was written at a later time and almost certainly by an Israelite. By the author writing that Job was the richest man in the East, it places the author in the West, in the land of Israel. The author frequently uses the name Yahweh, which I think would not have been done in Abraham's time, which was long before God's name was revealed to Moses at the burning bush. The author was a highly educated man. All of the book, except the first two chapters, are in exquisite poetry. The author displays an in-depth knowledge of mythology, the constellations, and the then-current wisdom concerning the world, including the underworld and traits of exotic animals. I might as well say it. The philosophy of this book is worthy of Solomon. Whoever he is, the author displays incredible wisdom. One would expect an ancient book that is didactic in nature to end with a neat answer that sums up the author's opinion. Or one would expect an ancient author to create a debate where the hero is totally right and the other speakers are clearly wrong. Instead, all the human speakers in the book of Job mix truth and error. It's a mark of inspired wisdom that, in the end, the book of Job leaves us still pondering and searching for some answers. Job 1 There was a man named Job, living in the land of Uz, who worshipped God and was faithful to him. He was a good man, careful not to do anything evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and owned seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, one thousand head of cattle, and five hundred donkeys. He also had a large number of servants, and was the richest man in the east. Job's sons used to take turns giving a feast, to which all of the others would come, and they always invited their three sisters to join with them. The morning after each feast, Job would get up early and offer sacrifices for each of his children in order to purify them. He always did this because he thought that one of them might have sinned by insulting God unintentionally. When the day came for the heavenly beings to appear before the Lord, Satan was there among them. The Lord asked him, What have you been doing? Satan answered, I've been walking here and there, roaming around the earth. Did you notice my servant Job? the Lord asked. There is no one on earth as faithful and good as he is. He worships me and is careful not to do anything evil. Satan replied, Would Job worship you if he got nothing out of it? You have always protected him and his family and everything he owns. You bless everything he does, and you have given him enough cattle to fill the whole country. But now suppose you take away everything he has. He will curse you to your face. All right, the Lord said to Satan. Everything he has is in your power, but you must not hurt Job himself. So Satan left. One day, when Job's children were having a feast at the home of their oldest brother, a messenger came running to Job. 
We were plowing the fields with oxen, he said, and the donkeys were in a nearby pasture. Suddenly the Sabians attacked and stole them all. They killed every one of your servants except me. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Lightning struck the sheep and the shepherds and killed them all. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Before he finished speaking, another servant came and said, Three bands of Chaldean raiders attacked us, took away the camels, and killed all your servants except me. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Before he had finished speaking, another servant came and said, Your children were having a feast at the home of your oldest son. When a storm swept in from the desert, it blew the house down and killed them all. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Then Job got up and tore his clothes in grief. He shaved his head and threw himself face downward on the ground. He said, I was born with nothing, and I will die with nothing. The Lord gave, and now he has taken away. May his name be praised. In spite of everything that had happened, Job did not sin by blaming God. we turn for the first time to the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Mark does not specifically identify himself as the author, but the Church Fathers unanimously say that John Mark, mentioned several times in the New Testament, was the author. Mark was a companion of Peter, so the eyewitness content in this book is that of Peter. I'll give more introduction to the book of Mark in tomorrow's podcast. Mark chapter 1 This is the good news about Christ Jesus, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to open the way for you. Someone is shouting in the desert. Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. So John appeared in the desert, baptizing and preaching. He told the people, Turn away from your sins and be baptized, and God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins, and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John wore clothes made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and his food included locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, The man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Not long afterward, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw heaven opening and the Spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my own dear son, I am pleased with you. At once the Spirit made him go into the desert, where he stayed forty days, being tempted by Satan. Wild animals were there also, but angels came and helped him. After John had been put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news from God. The right time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. As Jesus walked along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. Jesus said to them, Come with me, and I will teach you to catch people. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went a little farther on and saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. 
Jesus and his disciples came to the town of Capernaum, and on the next Sabbath, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people who heard him were amazed at the way he taught, for he wasn't like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. Just then, a man with an evil spirit came into the synagogue and screamed, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, Be quiet and come out of the man. The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a loud scream, and came out of him. The people were all so amazed that they started saying to one another, What is this? Is this some kind of new teaching? This man has authority to give orders to the evil spirits, and they obey him. And so the news about Jesus spread quickly everywhere in the province of Galilee. Each day, after reading to you, I will often say, let me start us out in prayer. And by that I am meaning that I hope that you continue to pray after my prayer has ended. And that's also why I don't end my prayers with an Amen. For the first time this year, let me start us out in prayer today. Our Father and our Lord God, We thank you for the story of your creation. And we pray, Father, that we would get all the details right, that we would understand how you created man, and we would understand the proper relationship between a husband and a wife. We would also understand our dominion over this creation. Father, we thank you also for the amazing things you will show us in the book of Job. One of our deepest questions, Lord, is why you allow suffering, and this book will give us answers and help us to think more deeply. Father, we pray that you would speak to us as we hear this book. And Lord, we have seen Jesus in this story for the first time, the one who was announced by your prophet and who came into the world, and who taught with authority and could cast out demons. And we pray that through this year we would come to know him much, much better. Lord, I thank you for the one who is listening to me now. And I rejoice that we will have fellowship together, although we do not know one another, You will be with us as we go through this year together. We ask these things for the glory of Christ.